Hello, welcome back to Switched On, Paul speaking, and welcome back to part two of my playthrough of Mars Horizon. Just giving you an overview here and playing through the first tutorials. If you've not seen the first part yet, please go back and check that out. But we're just going to carry on here. So you remember in the first video, we finished off that first tutorial, which was just basically an overview of the game and getting a sounding rocket into the sky. As uh, somebody on my uh, comments rightly said, Sanding rocket doesn't actually go into space as I uh, excitedly exclaimed, but just goes up for a test. Um, so we'll carry on here. So the uh, we've got the next set of tutorial objectives here on the right hand side. We've got to research the artificial satellite, which we did already. Uh, research a mission payload, build the mission payload, build a mission vehicle, and then complete artificial science mission. You can see that the uh, tutorial pop up it says congratulations on completing your first tutorial objective. The test launch was a resounding success, granting your agency valuable support and science. So they both go up in the top right hand corner. So it's just saying the next tutorial involves researching the artificial satellite mission. As I say, we've already done that. So we can check out the mission payload research. Uh, da, 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 da. We're going to need to. Research this the ESRO2B. So let's get that underway and go on a month. And we've completed the payload research there. So now we need to build it onto a rocket and get this into the sky. One thing I did say if you are, are sort of, um, you, you did watch the first part of the video and uh, you want to know if the gameplay changes much, it does, and hopefully we'll show that in this video here there's like little mini games that you take part in once your payload is up in the sky and orbiting the earth so that's uh, really another dimension to this game as well but hopefully we will get to that so you just get these little pop-ups for when you get new spacepedia articles so it's just saying there if you wanted to we can go to spacepedia and find out what esro is I believe it's on the payloads and then you get an explanation of what it is, a bit of historical context, and a nice little picture of it there. You can zoom in and out of, and spin around and have a look at. So as I mentioned in my uh, first video, really good stuff in terms of information that you're gonna get in the game. So we've got a exclamation mark over Earth, which means that there's a mission to look at. So we click on that, and we've now got these request missions, which as I explained in the first video, are just kind of little supplementary missions it tells you there. Um, don't need any further uh, research just require a free mission slot when you start the game you only have one mission slot and you unlock more as you build buildings and unlock more uh, milestones as well so we're not going to take that on as I mentioned in the first video as well we've also got this lovely uh, sort of league table of how people are progressing we can see this first one here test launch which we did uh, we actually won that. We got first spot. Russia are looking like the... Oh, China. Sorry. Apologies. China. <laughs> In pole position to take second spot. Followed by NASA, Japan and Russia at the bottom there. Bringing up the rear. So, artificial satellite. Nobody's started doing much to this yet. Only us. We've got the research done. We haven't got anything planned out, which is fine. This is what we're going to do on the next step. So, we press X. And we need to build a rocket to carry the payload into space. So these are you as I say, once you unlock more mission slots, you'll have multiple plans here possibly. Choose which one you want. Choose which vehicle to build. So we need to make sure we get the ESR 02B on a good enough or powerful enough rocket to get it into space. And again, some tutorial tips there telling you all about. Uh, the different elements of the technical details here. So we've got the payload rating. That's uh, how how sort of successful it's going to be once we launch it. The reliability is a bar graph there, so 70% chance. That all adds into the uh, mission calculations of how successful it's going to be. How many crew we can fit in? Obviously zero at the moment. Uh, starting power. This becomes um, relevant when we do the mini games. You have so much power to spend. And uh, we will show you that hopefully a little bit later on. Uh, the mass, that's the weight of the payload. And we need to get a rocket that can carry 40 kilograms of mass. It's going to take two months to build that. It's going to cost £100,000 
100,000 credits. So there's our payload. So once this is done, we will get a notification. So there are traits here as well. When the engineers build these payloads and rockets, uh, there's a random chance that you're going to get a trait. Um, better random chance if you are got more reliability and better engineers and that kind of thing. Uh, or there might be no traits. It could be a negative trait. So we'll find out about that once it's built. So that's going to take two months to build. We're going to spend 100,000 credits on getting this built. Begin construction immediately and expecting to be built in September 1957. So we go back to the uh, overview here. We can just carry on. There's no news, I don't think, of anything of any importance. We've still got these bits and bobs here. We can research something else because we've got nothing researching at the moment. So we could possibly expand our research lab. We need, you see here, to come down to this tree here, you need two previously um, elements researched. We've only got one. We've only got the building of the research lab. We would need to build either the rocket test pad or the spacecraft assembly facility to then be able to come down here and build mission control. Mission control is the first, I think it's the first legitimate mission, if I remember back, but we're probably going to be better off building one of these, I think. Let's go with, what do we want? Let's go with the test pad. Get that built, because then we can move on to the next mission. In the base building here, we've got the research lab that we researched. We could spend a hundred grand on uh, putting that down. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Technological hub of your space agency research lab can greatly improve scientific yields from missions, which obviously is going to be handy, but it's going to cost us a hundred grand. Oh, I think we can do it. Let's do it. So you can see here, it's got two green pluses by putting it in this location, which is excellent. So uh, that's the ideal spot to build. Yeah, you can see in the bottom right hand corner the effect it has is minus two percent in vehicle build cost, minus three percent in payload build cost. We're gonna we're gonna build that. That's fine. It's gonna cost us hundred grand. Let's go on to the next month. So the rocket test pad research is complete, which means that we can do the next research. So you can press X and now you can see we've got a tick here, and we can either research the expansion to the research lab. Or this one more importantly we can build a mission control it says then the mission control is responsible for the critical phase of a mission after launch monitoring and issuing commands to a spacecraft we do need that so we will build that don't want to build the launch pad yet because I'm a bit conscious of how much money we've got it's gonna be another hundred grand to build the rocket test pad let's just get this uh, payload built and see where we are so the payload's built, there you go, you can see it's built there, we get to know now about any traits. And it says our engineers have reported the payload assembly completed without any notable issues, which is fine, and we get the expected 70% reliability, which we knew going into building it. If you do get any traits, positive or negative, it will affect this reliability. You may see my cursor jumping over the screen a little bit, this is a bit of a, not a niggle with the game, because you can change the sensitivity of the cursor. And I've been using a different controller and it's been absolutely fine. It's just my pro controller has got a little bit of drift. But I mean, it's this the cursor in the game has basically got zero dead zones. So just literally just tapping my controller, you know, is sending the cursor flying. As I say, you can adjust the sensitivity. Um, but if your controller's, you know, got not got any drift problems, you should be okay. So now we've got this uh, payload built. You can see up here the steps. We've got the overview. From here, the payload, which we built, and then the vehicle now we need to build to get the payload into the sky. Weighs 40 kilograms. And we're going to design a new launch vehicle. And it's two stages, an upper stage and a booster. You can see here these crosses indicate it isn't good enough yet to carry the payload, but obviously we haven't selected anything in the rocket yet. So once we start picking uh, the parts that we need, we'll be fine. You can rename it yourself as well. That gives them, give a, a random name to the rocket. This one's called Akhenenten. Of course, most of them are called like Cyril or Jessica or something. Of course, when uh, it comes to recording for the channel, it's got a name that I can't pronounce. So 
Aken Aten. But as I say, you can change it. So these are the um, upper stages that we can use. If it's got this little uh, orange triangle on it, uh, it means we haven't built it yet. So um, I haven't researched it yet. So it's going to take some science to build it. So let's just have a look at these. This first one here, the upper stage here. That's just explaining about mass and weight of the vehicle. So you can see here, the first one we picked, which would be the cheapest and obviously the most basic as well, up to the most complicated and expensive down at the bottom here. But this first one's going to be good enough. can carry the 40 kilograms that we need. It can go into Earth's orbit, which is where we're going to send this mission. Um, so that upper stage is fine. Now we need a booster that's capable of carrying 400 kilograms. So let's have a look at our boosters. And as I say, we need one that's capable of carrying at least 400 kilograms. This booster here, again, the first one, the cheapest and the easiest to build. Can carry 400 grams, uh, 400 kilograms. So we've got ticks all the way down. So this is the right thing to build. But the orange warning signs there, the little science icons, maybe need to build some uh, of the parts before we can send this into space. Uh, it's going to take three months to build. It costs 98000 We haven't got much choice. We've not researched these yet, but we haven't got much choice. We need to take them. Going to confirm the design. But we need to, say, research those parts first. So we need... I think it tells you anyway when you go into... Yeah, yeah, you've got the little green icons there to help you and to say that they're required parts. So, Emerald, Emerald will take two months to build, cost 50,000. And uh, Topaz here is going to take one month to build. So, anyway, let's get researching. You can only research one thing at a time at the beginning until you get more research. Um, so, we're going to have to scrap our previous research and mission control. Uh, any, it says there any progress made on mission control will be retained so we can just carry that on in the future so we're building the rocket let's go back to the overview here that's fine we don't need to look at any of that yet let's just skip on to the next month research lab is complete that's fine so you can always see as well on the right hand side the steps that you need we're just building the mission vehicle at the moment it's going to take three months to do Emerald. That's fine, that's just more tutorials. It looks like it skipped on ahead anyway, so that's fine. So we need to do more research now. We do the upper stage, the Topaz. Get that researching good idea as well to keep an eye on the missions as well as you're doing these we go back to the overview just to make sure nobody is catching up you can see here now uh, everybody else has researched the science needed for this mission so nasa china russia and japan have all um completed the research but they are not planning the mission yet we are planning the mission said so a little clipboard there so that's fine we can keep this rolling and again, keep your eye on the news. If there's anything relevant, it does pop up for you. So just go to the next month. And we've got Topaz researched and built now. So we can now get that going. You can see that China is launching their artificial satellite in 13 months. Uh, as I say, in these tutorials, it will take a little while for the uh, AI um, space um, embassies to you know, get their stuff done. But when the, the game gets going, their, their timing does get pretty tight. So we've got a prompt here. We can carry on researching something else. Maybe we can go back and carry on uh, the mission control. Oh, sorry. In buildings. You can see there's already a little bit researched of it. That will just pick up from where we left off. That's fine. Our active mission. Now we can build this vehicle. Now we've researched all the parts. It's going to cost 98000 We've got 355 You can see that at the top. So that's fine. Engineers will begin construction immediately. Arc Hatenen will be completed 
on March 1958 in three months. So we'll skip to the next month. You can press Y to skip to the next uh, event, but this is a new thing. This is a pop-up here. Uh, the Soviet Union proposed research exchange. Soviet Union have proposed an exchange of technology research. They are offering to share their spacecraft assembly facility research if your agency shares its research on research labs. Accepting the offer would unlock the research spacecraft assembly facility. And this is what I said about at the start, when you've got the uh, diplomacy, you know, other agencies can be friendly or negative. I thought Soviet Union were against us, but, you know, I'm quite happy to exchange this. If we give away our research into the research lab, that's not much. And we get a, a research in exchange, so we'll have that. And we gain 20 reputation with the Soviet Union, which is cool. Get a budget review so you check how things have been going this is where you get your tiers going up so you can see here we've got um, 150 support since the previous budget has put us up to tier two and that means we now get 90,000 credits a month which is all good spacecraft assembly facility which we got from russia is all good and you see here, your first milestone challenge is now available. These are optional goals for your agency that involve completing certain milestones in return for substantial awards. To view the current milestone challenge, select Earth or other, any other planetary body and ex uh, access the mission select screen. So you can see here, the milestone challenge. Let's have a look at this. The current milestone challenge can be found here along with the required objective and the reward on offer. So on the top bar there, you will have the milestone challenge. It says here, complete three milestone missions and you get a reward of 25% uh, reduction in mission, mission research cost for six months if we do that. So we need to do three milestone missions, which are these ones down the side. So we've already done test launch. Don't think that counts because one of the uh, things isn't lit up, but uh, we do artificial satellite, animal and space and satellite imagery, for example. We would unlock this reward and get 25% off our research costs for six months, which is fine. So artificial satellite, you can see here, China have researched and built their rocket and they've actually scheduled in a launch date uh, in 11 months, which puts them top of mission progress, even though we're ready to go and we're probably going to uh, get our launch in much before then. But as you can see how that works now, they've jumped to the top of uh, who's winning the race to do that mission. But we're going to go to the planning stage uh, as soon as we get this rocket built. So let's skip ahead a month. Skip ahead another month. We're all built. So you can see here again, we get any traits, any notification of any traits that were made. Uh, so there you go. Our engineers managed to optimize the vehicle's uh, attitude control systems which will improve launch stability plus five percent launch reliability so that's excellent so we've got a positive trait when our guys built that mission training we can do as it says there training is a crucial part of the mission plan it allows your staff and crew to focus on a particular aspect of the mission in the months before the launch date the type of training chosen can greatly benefit areas such as launch reliability or the amount of science gained from mission so you set training and then basically whilst the mission is in a planning state you gain extra um, resources and the longer you take to um, select your launch date the more training you get in so again it's this kind of risk and reward do you sort of set a launch date six months down the line so you can get loads of training in or do you launch next month with very little training but obviously getting in earlier it all depends you know we need to get in before russia or is it china i was getting that that one mixed up let's have a look who was it? It was China. So we need to basically launch within nine months. So we've got kind of a nine month window at the moment that we could set our launch date for. So let's set some training. You can choose which area to focus on your training. We've only got science available at the moment, so we're just going to pick that and continue. So all the while this mission's in a planning state, we're going to be gaining training in science and getting extra rewards. Still saying we need to complete all mission plan stages. Oh, yeah, launch date, of course. So, here's the calendar. We can see at the moment our training profile per month we're getting 5% uh, additional science up to a maximum of 25%. 
so it all depends when we set our launch date here so april we can't launch in it's invalid it's red may is not going to be an optimal launch but we can pick it if we want but there will be repercussions 20 percent launch reliability penalty which we don't really want especially when there's these lovely open green months here that we can still get in before china So let's go for, and again, we, we want to spread this out a little bit because now we're getting 10% extra science because we're going two months. It's 5% a month. So if we stretch it out to say August, we get the full 25% bonus in science training because all this time from here, we're ready and we've got the, the guys in the classrooms and stuff doing the research and all this time we've got with the rocket and uh, you know the information that we're gathering gives us 25% extra science and I think August is a good launch if anything goes wrong with the weather we've then got a fall back into September we just can't go into October or November but it does give us a bit of a, of a fall back there if we can't launch in August so we're going to go for we're going to launch this rocket in August this payload we're going to confirm that we've got you know some five or six months of training to get in as well and that's all good so we've got some news popped up down the side. Soviet Union completed their test launch. They were fourth place. Japan completed their test launch. Uh, NASA failed to launch the test launch. So that's not good for them. So we've got some more research we can be doing. Astronaut training would be good because we'll have some uh, some of the missions later on will be needing astronauts. But maybe we need to research the actual missions because once we've done uh, this payload our next mission is going to be and again apologies if this is jumping around it's quite sensitive to scroll this and I know it can be quite annoying so let me get the tool tips out of the way um, so we've got the next training we can do is either the lunar orbit or the animal in space lunar orbit is the next mission so I think we're going to jump in on that one before anybody else and uh, learn all about that mission we're going to skip ahead got a few months to skip ahead now you can see down in the bottom right hand corner these are our uh, important events we're launching at in two months you know, June and July lunar orbit research complete that's that mission done so we need to pick new research um, let's have a look at that mission actually lunar orbit I think we need the lunar orbit before we can do satellite imagery was it I think possibly and we can take this side mission at any time it doesn't need any research so these missions are, are for things you've already built we could do a test launch with the atmospheric sampling as well but that's gonna you know it's in one month it's gonna clash with our launch that's just um set the research for this payload of the pioneer and then we're getting ready now to do our launch so this is the big biggie this is the launch of the artificial satellite it's an optimal date we've got 25 percent science training you can see the mission progress board there we are just a few months ahead of china It's really important to be the first to get these bonuses. So here we are, Mission Control. It's a lovely sunny day again for our launch. Again, don't know where we're launching from. Let's uh, let's say I don't know, let's say France. France sounds a good place to launch from. So can we get the rocket into the air? All things are pointing good so far. We've got a 73% launch reliability. You can see there are very small chance of something going critically wrong. You're looking at 4% critical failure, which means that the rocket blows up, basically. 14% um, negative event, which means it launches, but it will cost us some science or money. Launch success just goes up with no problems. And then a 21% chance of a positive event, which means it goes up and we get some positive, you know, either extra science or extra money. 10% extra boost as well for excellent conditions. So here we go. Fingers crossed. We 
tents back in mission control. Up she goes. Now behind the scenes here, there's lots of like dice rolling and random, you know, RNG going on. But you know, it is quite stats based. You can influence it as long as you've done your research and all that kind of stuff. You know, you're going to have a good chance of getting it up there. So there you go. Only 50%. So it wasn't quite as good as we were expecting. We were expecting something in the 70s, hopefully. But 50%. It's fine. Goes up there. No mission effect. We get a uh, sort of a, an upgrade in uh, Emerald and Topaz. They go up a level, which means their reliability improves for the next time we use them. 2% for Emerald. 3% uh, for Topaz. And now we get this mini game. Now, this is the other thing I, wanted to, I was going to tell you about at the start. This is here where you have to interact with your payload um, to complete the mission. So it looks really confusing at first. Again, the tutorials do explain what you need, but I will just quickly tell you what's going on best I can. Down here is the amount of turns that you can take. Well, actually, no. Here is the amount of turns you can take. So we get four attempts at this. And within each attempt, you can issue up to two commands. Okay, so we get four turns, two commands per turn to basically do these objectives. We need to get two of the comms resource, the red sort of uh, Wi-Fi symbol. And we need to get two of the data resource, like the uh, disk drive symbol there. If we get um, two and two, we get a 50% bonus. Later missions will, you know, this will be much higher than the objective, you know, so it'll be, you'll get a bonus if you say get four instead of two uh, and three of the data instead of two, for example, you'll get rewards. But this one is just saying we'll get a 50% bonus reward if basically we complete the objective. Now to do the objective, you have to balance resources in to what the results you get out. So basically, if we do an easy one here, if we put one power in, so one of these lightning symbols, if we send one of those, we get out one comms resource. And that will go up there and we'll say we'll have one of two. It would have cost us one power. And this is what I was saying about when I was building the payload, it starts with uh, four power. You can see that up there. When we run out of power, we're in problems. And they get more complicated. This one here, obviously, you put one data in. We haven't got any data yet, so that you can see how that becomes a problem. But one data in, we get two comms out. If we put in a power and a data, we get three comms out. And then to collect the uh, data resource, we put one power in, get one data out. One comms in, get one data out. Put a power and a comms in, get three data out. And we can also, on each turn, we can also recharge the power as well if we need to. So as I say, it's a little bit complicated to get your head around, but once you do get your head around, it's a nice little puzzle to solve. So let's try it. We want to get two comms, two data. So the first thing, the only resource we've got at the moment to put in is power. That's the only thing we can use at the moment. So going to use, basically I'm going to use one power to get one comms out. And then on the next turn, we're going to use that one comms and another power to get three data and then we'll probably use the data to get two comms let's try it it sounds complicated but trust me this should be okay so we're going to use that for that and then we're going to use that for that we're going to confirm the commands you see they've gone in down there and you'll see now oh no that's not going to work and again the reliability of the payload the better the payload is the better chance this has to work uh, to work now, even though it failed, we can uh, resist the failure by pumping in more power or we can accept the failure. But as we've got a bit of spare power, I'm going to use this resist here. It's going to cost us one power, but basically it means we're going to pass that uh, attempt and get some comms out. And then the second one there uses a comms to hopefully get two data. That one passed at 55% and we used the comms that we generated in the first turn to get some data out so we accept that and you'll see those go up to the top as resources so we generated one comms and then we spent that one comms to generate one data we're now going to use another power and that one data we generated to generate three comms because we need to get two so by getting three 
we'll then have basically one spare to get some more data. We might also recharge our power. Yeah. We're going to recharge our power and then spend one power, one data to get free comms. Fingers crossed. So there's our power being recharged. Oh, and again, we don't get the result we need. Another failure, which means we have to spend another power to make sure that of a success. Now, this leaves us with one power. We've got two turns left. We've got one power left, although we can generate power on a turn, but it means you only get one command. But we're going to do that because we need the power. So now all we need now is two data. So to get two data, the best way we could do it here is to spend one power on one of our comms and we'd get three data, presuming it's a success. And we would have, a, have enough then to complete all of this objective up here. You can see it's all gone green if we can pass it. So here we go. So there's our power recharging. And they Again, we don't get the success. We're going to have to resist that again. Which means we're out of power, but it should mean we pass this mission. And there you go. There's the success. So, sorry if that all seemed a little bit complicated. I hope you kind of followed along. But, as I say, once you get the hang of it, it's a really enjoyable little puzzle to solve. Uh, and a really just nice, a nice another little gameplay wrinkle to this one. But there you go, we've completed the whole mission of Earth Orbit. We sent our, we researched the payload, we built the payload, we then built a upper section and a booster for a rocket, we launched our payload into space, or into orbit, and then we completed the mission that was required, getting photos and data and that kind of thing. And there you go, our rewards is 315 support points, 450 science for the next two months. Which is absolutely awesome. And there you go. With your artificial satellite safely in orbit, you've achieved a major milestone for your agency and opened the door to launching more complex payloads, perhaps even those that could carry humans into space. So there you go. So we'll end the video there. Thanks for watching. The next um, section would be to build mission control and to complete another mission, we can get the choice, if you remember, from the active mission screen. Why can't we get to the mission screen? Let's just go to Earth. Uh, the next mission is either putting an animal in space, satellite imaging, or human in space. Again, we'll need to research those. And uh, probably research the relevant parts and payloads as well. And you can see how the sort of gameplay loop goes on. Research, building and launching your payloads into space and completing the mission. So there you go. It's a really, really nice gameplay loop. Hope that made a lot of sense to you. Please leave me any questions below if you have them. I really hope you enjoy this game. It's out tomorrow or it will be today by the time you guys are watching this. I'm recording this um, a day before launch. Uh, I really hope you enjoy it. It's a great game. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. And I will see you all on the next part. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.